And if there was only one food that I could eat for the rest of my life, that's what it would be. Open up a tab on Google, maybe even Google Images, and type in healthy fats or even healthy food, healthy diet, and what gets rendered. It's going to be a lot of plant-based, greens, vegetables, heart-healthy whole grains, maybe some seed oils, God forbid. You know what's interesting is that the greatest superfood for human beings that I've literally eaten a ton of over 2,000 pounds over the past eight years is beef, red meat. That's right. The same food that you have been told is going to raise your cholesterol, cause cancer, and give you a heart attack. Eight years ago, I can remember having similar thoughts when a man who literally lives halfway around the world in Australia, relative to me, told me that cholesterol was colossally misunderstood and that red meat is indeed a superfood. In fact, eight years ago, this man also told me to make the majority of my diet comprised of just four things, meat, milk, eggs, and basmati rice. And what I found fascinating were the versions of these four foods that he recommended, which was in stark contrast to the conventional wisdom, the prevailing mainstream dietary dogma. Not just meat, not just the white meat, the chicken that you've been told to consume, but red meat, beef, the best source. Not skim milk, that's lowest in fat, devoid of fat, but full fat dairy. And not egg whites, but whole eggs. Eating the yolk, a great source of choline, of cholesterol, a testosterone precursor. And not whole grain, hard, healthy brown rice, chock full of arsenic and phytic acid. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. White rice. Basmati rice. The best grain of rice that is lowest in arsenic, lowest in phytic acid, and has a moderate glycemic index. I found this advice really fascinating because I was a kid contending with a colossal problem with an unbelievably inflamed esophagus, one that left me in dire straits for the six years leading up to that point in time, having experienced hundreds of choking episodes, these episodes of my esophagus that, to be honest with you, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. I wouldn't want anyone in this life to have to experience this. Just the emotional upheaval, the stress, the anxiety, the embarrassment, embarrassment that really shook me to my core, man, and made me a shell of the person that I am today. It really shook up my confidence being unable to eat in mixed company without the deeply rooted concern, without the prospect of the next bite of food that I took to render such considerable dysphagia, difficulty swallowing that it would completely impact my esophagus and leave me unable to speak and barely able to breathe. Man, that sucked. <sighs> that really sucked. No one should have to experience that. No one should have to have an esophagus that's, that's on fire, man. 
the literal thing that you use your food pipe to pass food so that you can eventually assimilate nutrients, nutrition. <sighs> and I had a team of doctors who did their best, who gave me the best map that was available in their mind, in their estimation. My gastroenterologist, Cheryl Blank, my allergist who specialized in eosinophilic esophagitis, Scott Dyer. And I'm so grateful for each of these individuals for putting me, orienting me in the direction that they saw fit. And I walked the path. I took the map. I studied the legend. I took one step after the other, after the other, man. I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to be the paragon of health. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen for me. I didn't get better. I swallowed the fluticasone propionate, the flow vent. I swallowed 40 milligrams of omeprazole every day. I went to the pharmacy sometimes with my mom. Initially, it was Shop and Save when I was younger. They rebranded into Hannaford. I think in a lot of ways, those young visits to the pharmacy planted the idea in my mind that that's what you do. Just the normalcy of that. Like, that's the answer. You go to the pharmacy and you pick up your 30-day supply of your proton pump inhibitor. And maybe that's what inspired, in a way, my pursuit of a doctorate in pharmacy. My five years spent as a consultant pharmacist for a long-term care facility and now working part-time in a community setting dealing with the cognitive dissonance of knowing that that's not ultimately the answer. My mom and I actually recently carpooled from that same Hannaford that she used to get my prescription medications at after work. And I love my mom. She's the vote that I always needed, the vote that was always cast in my favor, out of her unconditional, relentless, man, undying love for her son. We recently met at this Hannaford that she would pick up my prescription medications at, and we headed south down to Portland, Maine to get a follow-up endoscopy. Today is Friday, October 20th. It is 2023, and this day has been many years in the making. Half of my life, almost 15 years. My mom's just getting out of work in a few minutes, and she's going to drive over to this Hannaford parking lot and meet me. We're going to be traveling down to Portland, Maine for a follow-up upper endoscopy, an EGD, an esophago gastro duodenoscopy. Eosinophilic esophagitis was the bane of my existence for the better part of a decade throughout my mid and late teens, as well as my early 20s. And on this journey of healing myself, of finding my freedom, I truly believe that I've stumbled across the Holy Grail. And today marks the day that I finally go full circle, where a picture is worth a thousand words actually comes to life. I'm going to try and do this procedure fully conscious. I don't know if they're actually legally going to allow that. They may need to, for policy and procedure reasons, sedate me with propofol. So that's why I'm going to have my mom drive down with me so that I have a chauffeur <laughs> drive me back home in and as needed. The hope here is to have a favorable follow-up, a favorable 15-year follow-up to this incredibly inflammatory imagery. I'm so excited to finally shed light and reveal from the inside out 
this transformation, this journey, not just the differences externally from when I was 15 years old to now turning 30 in less than a month, but truly the inner oasis that I've gone on and what my esophagus actually looks like, no holds barred. I can talk about how much better I feel, but at the end of the day, I want to give people proof and not just promises. I really want to give people buy-in as to the process that I'm purporting to be replicable to put the health back in humanity. That's where they stick an endoscope into your mouth, <laughs> down your esophagus, down your throat, and into your stomach. It's very uncomfortable. I highly recommend doing the conscious sedation. They'll offer you some fentanyl, a little bit of Valium, some diazepam. It's a benzodiazepine. <laughs> ah. But in my infinite wisdom, I wanted to get this done completely cold. You know, a big theme of my journey after crossing paths with this Australian savant halfway around the world has been taking a food first approach to fixing my physiology and finding my freedom and forgetting about the pharmaceuticals. But as a pharmacist myself, I'm not anti-pharmaceuticals. I'm not anti-drug. I'm not anti-pharma. What I am is pro-exploration, pro-excavation, pro-elucidation of etiology, of the root cause of your condition. And seeing that as a microcosm, as a theme, as a first principle that you can apply to the rest of your life. When your life's not going as you'd like it to, don't just put a band-aid over it. Don't just mask the problem. But see that ostensibly that emotional upheaval as an invitation for exploration. And go on the voyage. Go on the voyage. Figure out where that takes you. Figure out what's causing the disconcerting symptomatology that has surfaced in your life. And so I did an upper endoscopy, fully conscious, <laughs> fully conscious. Now I've been meditating for eight years now. Funny enough, the mentor who told me about meat, milk, eggs, and basmati rice. Also, upon me asking what the number one habit was that I could implement into my life. He told me about mindfulness, about meditation, and a meditative state I entered indeed. And the agreement that we had made was, I let them place the pick line, that's fine, totally cool. And if I'm squirming, if I'm making things difficult for you and your team, and you're going to be unable to get good imaging, do what you got to do. <laughs> give me the Valium. Give me the fentanyl. I'm not even opposed to that. You've got the pick line placed. And if I don't make good on my end of the deal, then that's only fair. But fortunately, I was able to make good on my end of the deal. And I was able to drive home. But it was great to have my mom in the passenger seat here and just have some good mother-son time. After this procedure had concluded, the nurse, Jeffrey, <laughs> how apt, how apt, <laughs> Jeffrey was his name, had to see me eat a bite of food and swallow water. Oh no. Oh no, he's giving me the kind bar. He's giving me the kind bar with canola oil, a refined bleached and deodorized oil that is extracted 
in a factory that resembles an oil <laughs> refinery. <laughs> That's not so kind. And he's giving me water in a plastic bottle that leaches endocrine disrupting chemicals that's going to feminize me <laughs> oh no we can't do that contraire mon frere my mom she's out in the waiting room jeff do you mind just going and touching base with her and seeing if she can get my stainless steel water bottle that has molecularly vapor distilled water in it <laughs> could you do that for me man Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have like a banana, some Greek yogurt, some beef, eggs, basmati rice. Didn't have anything that I could snack on. So what I did was I opened up the packaging and I ripped off a piece of this kind of bar and I pocketed it, man. Oh, later threw it out the window. But what else was I going to do? I wasn't going to swallow that, man. I'll swallow your endoscope with the cameras to get the imaging. I'll swallow the distilled water that I've personally signed off on, that I've personally distilled with my own vapor distiller. Drank out of medical grade stainless steel. But I won't swallow your feminizing water and I won't swallow your kind bar. But thank you for the offering. But see, it's precisely those behaviors that made me struggle for over half of a decade, that made me discontented, a shell of the person that I am today, unable to express myself authentically. It's precisely those behaviors that resulted in systemic inflammation, not only of my esophagus, but of my mind, that made me unable to Intuit the emotions of people, man. Unable to just be a cool dude, a chill dude with emotional intelligence. It's precisely the sick societal mainstream practices of consuming tap water, industrial seed oil, processed, packaged frankenfoods that put me between a rock and a hard place. It's precisely avoiding the red meat that I'm told is going to cause cancer. It's going to raise my cholesterol. It's going to give me a heart attack. That made my health leave so much to be desired. And in the past eight years since being introduced to the idea that red meat is divinely healthy, is in fact a superfood, I've eaten a ton of red meat. And yes, I mean that seriously. I've eaten over 2,000 pounds of red meat since that point in time. And it amazes me to see what I've been able to accomplish since that point in time. Just the vitality that I have, the years on end that I've gone without taking a day off from work due to sickness, due to illness my ability to be present for people, the strength that I have, just being able to carry my own weight and be a force to be reckoned with in the gym, my near four-digit testosterone levels, just feeling like a million bucks, man, and wanting other people to feel that way as well. I'm so grateful. Ah. Oh. For this man who lives halfway around the world, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share this story, to share on screen now the before and after imaging from this endoscopy that I had performed. On the left side of the screen, you can see just how inflamed my esophagus used to be. I was 15 years old. This was in 2009. And on the right side of the screen, you can see 
right now, in 2023, what my esophagus looks like. 2,000 plus pounds of red meat later. The same red meat that you've been told is inflammatory and not heart healthy. I love you very much. I want you to be healthy. I want you to take the idea seriously that red meat is the greatest superfood in stark contrast to what you would see if you pulled up a tab on Google right now and typed in healthy food. Yeah, no. Red meat is incredibly nutritious. And if there was only one food that I could eat for the rest of my life, that's what it would be. I love you very much. I hope you're happy and healthy. I hope you've buckled up and have joined me on this journey. Until next time, my friend, find your freedom. Peace.